بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we think Allah عز وجل that he has allowed us to witness another Juma weekend and week out we always we, we experience so many blessings of Allah one of the greatest blessings is obviously the blessing of Iman but beyond that you know what they're meaning during the time of Nuh alayhi salam they're meaning during the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam so Iman is a great ni'mah however Allah gave us an additional ni'mah which is that which is that we are part of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam we could have been a mu'min during the time of Musa alayhi salam we could have been a mu'min during the time of Isa alayhi salam but Allah Azza wa Jalla, out of His mercy, has allowed us to be amongst the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is an ayah, you know, in Surah Najm, Allah says, "When Najmi da huwa ma dalla sahibukum wa ma gawa." Allah Azza wa Jalla, He, uh, he, he, He's explaining the different qualities of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, in in within within this passage, Allah talks about the incident of Mi'raj when He ascended. And he met Allah Azza wa Jal. So over there in, in that context, Allah says, Awha ila abdihi ma awha. Allah revealed to him what he revealed. In Arabic, there's something called ibham, when you leave thing, something ambiguous. It can have different purposes. One purpose is to show it's too, it's too good to be explained, it's ineffable. فَغَشِيَهُمْ مِنَ الْيَمِّ مَا غَشِيَهُمْ When Allah is talking about the Fir'a, people of Fir'aun, and how they were drown, how, how they had drowned in the in the in the sea, Allah says, "Whatever overcame them, overcame them." I mean, it's it's too much for you to understand. So, in a similar manner, in this in this context of Mi'raj, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he experienced something that was so great. It was so great that it, that it cannot be explained. Therefore, Allah said, "Fa'uha ila abdhi ma'uha." Whatever Allah has revealed to His servant, He revealed. That's the maqam of Rasulullah sallallahu His status, the status of Rasulullah sallallahu according to the entire Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah, is that he is the greatest of all creation. Not just the greatest of all humans, not just the greatest of all anbiya. He's the greatest of all creation, which means including the lawh, the lawh al mahfuz, the qalam, the kursi, Jibreel, Mikail, Israfil, all the angels, all the prophets, all humans, all jinn, all creation. Out of all creation, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi is the greatest of all. You know what? This past week in this Dar Salaam, in, our, in the seminary, we've been having exams. During exam week, what happens, or even prior to exams, students usually ask teachers for guidelines. You know, they they ask them for study guides. Humans in general, they like to take shortcuts, right? We like to take shortcuts. We ask this this teacher for study guides. We ask them for guidelines. You know. Cliff notes, mark, spark notes, all these different things. Why? Because we don't want to, you know, we just want to get, you know, get, get, get to the point. So in a similar manner, we all want to get to Jannah. Right? We all want to get to Jannah. But, you know, what's the shortcut to get to Jannah? So one time, during the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before Salah, a uh, Bedouin came. The Bedouins, it was typical of them that they would ask strange questions. One time, for example, Nabi Sallam was riding uh, his camel, and then a Bedouin came and grabbed the reins of the camel and said, Oh Muhammad, tell me how to get to paradise, for example. So he was very abrupt, that was their nature, they lived in the, in the deserts, that's how they, that's how, they, everyone's a part of their own environment. So, again, so this, uh, this a Bedouin came, and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu right before Salah, he said, Mata qiyamu sa'a He said, when's the day of judgment going to be? When's the day of judgment going to be? So, I mean, Rasulullah he, he said, okay, I'll answer you after salah. He, prayed, he finished the salah. After salah, he said, Aina sa'il Where's the one that was, the, where's the individual that was asking me about the day of judgment? When is it going to be? 
So the man said, that's me. So then the Rasulullah sallallahu said, وَمَا أَعْدَدْتَ لَهَا What have you prepared for the Day of Judgment? So then he said, you know what, I haven't done, I don't do too many extras, nafil, salah, or like song. But I do love Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-mar'u ma'aman ahabba. A man will be with the one whom he loves. So just like, you know, we ask teachers for guidelines, or we try taking shortcuts to fulfill the, our purpose. In a similar manner, a shortcut to get to Jannah is to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where is Rasulullah? You know, in another hadith, there was a man who was, he looked pretty sad. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, what's wrong with you? What happened? And he said, I was just thinking the other day, I was at home, and I was thinking, I love you so much. And um, I was thinking, you know, when, when Akhirah comes, you're going to be with, you're going to be in the highest level of Jannah. But I'm a nobody. So even if I do get to Jannah, I'm not going to be at your level. So he said, I was, I was just sad about that. So then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he remained silent. And then later on, the ayah was revealed. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَاكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّنَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَاكَ رَفِيقًا He said, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, those who follow Allah and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be amongst the prophets, the siddiqeen, the martyrs, and the pious. You know, there's one poem that's you know, a very famous poem amongst the students of knowledge. وَحِبُّ الصَّالِحِينَ وَلَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلَّ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُنِي صَلَاحًا I love the pious, but I'm not amongst them. Perhaps, لَعَلَّ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُنِي صَلَاحًا Perhaps due to my love for the pious, Allah will grant me some piety. So this concept of mahabba is such a fundamental key in our deen. You know, look, look take hajj for example. What's the whole purpose of hajj? You're going around the Kaaba seven times. What's the purpose? You're just walking around a cube. Okay, then after that, you go do Sa'i. You go between two mountains seven times. What's the point of all of it? You go to Mina, Arafat, Muzdarifa. What's the point? At the end of it all, you know Allah says in Surah Hajj, the surah that's named after Hajj. Allah says, وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِن تَقْوَ الْقُلُوبِ The one who honors, the one who reveres the symbols of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is piety. That's what taqwa is. You know, if you look in the same page, actually in the same page, Allah, Allah, Allah talks about udhiyya. When you have to slaughter, you know, the animal on Yom Al-Eid. Allah says, لَنْ يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ it's not, your, it's not the blood of the animal or the meat of the animal Allah wants. It's not going to reach Allah. Allah says, rather the taqwa that's in your heart is going to reach Allah Azza wa But what is taqwa? It's revering Allah Azza wa and by extension, all those that are associated with Allah Azza wa And obviously the greatest of all beings that's associated to, uh, associated to Allah Azza wa is none other than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know the concept of love, right, in, our deen, in general, if you to look inside yourself and you to, you know, examine what you love and what you don't love, you know, what, what causes you to love something? There is something in the beloved that makes you love the beloved. But what is that thing? So generally speaking, there's four different causes. Number one is like Kamal, having some perfection. You know, people love athletes. They're their number one fans. They love athletes, celebrities. Why do they love them? They haven't seen them their whole... They probably saw them on... The athlete has no idea who you are. You could be alive, you could be dead, he has no idea. But why do people love celebrities, athletes, and all these individuals? It's because they're, they're really good at what they do. Since they're really good at what they do, people love them. Right? Another, another cause of mahabba is uh, nawal. One is kamal, one is nawal. When nawal is to, be, to, to, to give ihsan to someone. It's to give a gift, it's to, 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 do, good, to, to do good and to be a well-wisher for someone else. A mother, for example, 
حملته وهن امه وهن على وهن انفصاله في عامين الله تعالى كبر الشوق ذا مذر ذا شي ذن سو ماتش فور ذا تشايلد اند ذا اوبيسلي كريت ا كونكشن ان ا باند وذ ذا تشايلد ذا نو ون ايلس كان ايفر هاف يو كود بي اني ون ايلس يو كان بي ذا بيست فريند ان ذا وورلد بت يو ار نوت ذا مذر بيكوز واي ذا مذر شي واز شي شي ديليفرد يو right so the the the, the connection that a man, uh, an individual will have with their mother will never be like the connection uh, with anyone else a third cause of mahabba and love is kamal jamal nawa jamal beauty and that's obvious i mean people are attracted to things that are beautiful another another uh, another sabab of mahabba is qaraba which is to have a personal relationship with something Now when you look at Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it comes to all four of these causes he's reached the epitome of all of them in kamal you know Allah Abu Sidi says his faqa an-nabi na fi khalqin wa fi khuluqin Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam surpassed all the anbiya alayhi wasallam in all physical and metaphysical attributes in all physical in when it when it comes to his character when it comes to the way he treated animals There's a hadith in Ibn Majah that says, "Ma darba Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam biyadihi shay'an shay'an qattu." Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam never hit anything, let alone a human being, let alone an animal. He never hit any inanimate thing. The mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He reached the epitome in all these qualities. When it comes to the jamal of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his 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 beauty. You know, beauty itself is very subjective. You know there is there is there is civilization in the world that considered like these molded weird heads to be beautiful. So what they would do was they would like tie up babies when they're like before up to the age of five. They would tie their heads up and so that their their heads could be molded because they thought that looked beautiful. Some some societies like to you know split their two you know teeth. They like to sp- they would do something some procedure so they could be split because they thought it looked nice. So it's very subjective. If you're to bring someone with a molded head in, in our society, we won't say that's mashallah, like looks pretty good, right? We won't say that. Why? Because in our society, it's not considered to be beautiful. However, there is something called universal beauty. What is universal beauty? That is when perfect symmetry, right? When when everything is in perfect balance. And you know, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. If you read the Shamail, that's exactly how he's described. كان ربعة من القوم He was, he wasn't, the, he wasn't too tall, nor was he too short. His hair wasn't too curly, nor was it too straight. It was slightly wavy. Rasulullah sallallahu he wasn't too dark in complexion, nor was he too light in, com- nor was he too fair in complexion. But in all aspects, he had perfect symmetry and he had perfect balance. So even in his physical beauty, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam reached perfection. When it comes to nawal, what has he done for us? Rather, we say, what has he not done for us? Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Forget this dunya. I mean, he's the one that taught us who Allah is. That should be sufficient. But beyond that, he spent countless nights crying for us to be sitting here today, a hundred, hundred of years after him. Forget that. Even, even in the akhirah, when everyone, the whole entire humanity, humanity, insan, jinn, everyone's going to be there. Malaika, anything you can think of, everything's going to be there. In that in that situation where everyone, كل كل لكل مريم منهم يوم من الشأن يغني. A mother is not going to care about her child. The father is not going to care about his child. You're not going to care about your brother. In that situation, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is the only creation of Allah that's going to be caring about us. Ummati, 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 ummati. He's going to be wanting for us to go to Jannah. He's going to ask Allah. He's going to. He said, I'm going to. I'm going to be given the opportunity to have the maqam Mahmud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start the hisab. I'm gonna prostrate in front of Allah Azza wa Jal for the sake of the entire humanity. So Rasulullah Sallam's nawal to us, he, the amount he has done for us in this dunya and akhirah can never be compared to. So in terms of his beauty, in terms of what he has done for us, in terms of his metaphysical, metaphysical qualities, and every aspect, Rasulullah Sallam reached perfection. Why should we not love him? Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu anhu says so beautifully. خلق وأحسن منك لم تر قط عيني وأجمل منك لم تريد النساء خلقت مبرأ من كل عيب كأنك قد خلقت كما تشاء. He says وأحسن منك لم تر قط عيني ما أي has ever seen anything as beautiful as you. وأجمل منك لم تريد النساء. Women have never given birth to anyone as beautiful as you. 
You've been created free from all defects. It's as if you've been created the way you want to be created. You know, one time, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala, he was one of the Imam of our deen. He, he went through a lot of torture in life. He's, he's one of the only, he's one of a few individuals who actually stood up to protect our aqidah. And then he was tortured tremendously by the government. One time, years later, when he, after he left the prison and whatnot, he was feeling some pain. So there was an individual who would go specific to the ulama and you know, check them out and you know, diagnose them and whatnot. So this individual came to Rasulullah, so, um, sorry, to Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah, to check out what was wrong. And then Imam Ahmad, you know, he said, I don't know, I'm having some back pain. So the man went to the cell that he, Imam Ahmad was tortured in, and he started asking like, what happened to this man. And then he was told that, you know, something had happened. Anyway, so when the, when the doctor came back, the doctor came back, he, he was examining his back, and he said, is this part hurting? He said, ha huna ahmadullah al -afiyah. Over here, I'm thankful Allah that he has left it, you know, Allah has given me afiyah. Next part, no, this is alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah al -afiyah. Over here, I thank Allah that Allah has saved me from any pain over here. Next part, no, this is good. Then he finally got to present, ha huna asadullah al -afiyah. Over here, now I ask Allah for afiyah. So anyways, <coughs> he began the procedure that was required. And then, Imam Ahmad obviously was going through a lot of pain. And as he was feeling the pain, he would say, Allahumma ghfir lil mu'tasim. Allahumma ghfir lil mu'tasim. Oh Allah, forgive mu'tasim. Who was mu'tasim? Mu'tasim is the same man that tortured him. He would say, Allahumma ghfir lil mu'tasim. Allahumma ghfir lil mu'tasim. Oh Allah, forgive mu'tasim. Oh Allah, forgive mu'tasim. And then he was asked, I mean, he's the one that tortured you. So then he said, I thought about that, I know he tortured me. But then I also thought, you know, he's related to the Prophet And I don't want to have any beef with someone that's related to the Nabi You know, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, I don't want to have any, anything to do, any, any ill feelings for anyone that's related to the Nabi May Allah Azawajal grant us tawfiq. May Allah grant us tawfiq to truly love the Nabi May Allah allow us to, to send immense salawat upon him. One hadith says that if you recite 10 salawat in the morning and in the evening, then you will, get, you will be granted the shafa of Rasulullah That's one easy thing to take back home. 10 salawat in the morning, 10 salawat in the evening. You can say salawat salam 10 times. And inshallah, to the barakah of that, you will get the shafa of Rasulullah sallam. May Allah Azza wa Jalla grant us all tawfiq. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallah, bihamdik. Nashadu Allah, ilaha, 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 il